here again with Dr. Nario. Thanks for being with us, Doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. All right. So we're going to talk about something I love to talk about. I love to talk about peptides, all kinds of peptides. Um, so we're, I get the opportunity to ask you some questions about another peptide. Uh, but first, if you guys are interested to know more about what Dr. Nario does, uh, Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada, that's where he is. And you can look them up online and see all the different treatments they do, the IV treatments and all that stuff. So this is a brain peptide, right? So what would you tell me? I mean, I have lots of questions, but what would you just tell me initially about how this peptide works? Right. Well, Steve, it, it, nowadays in the world that we live in, everybody's just so worried about their brains. We forget things, uh, I mean, little things, big things, and it changes a lot in, in our lifestyle. And also the scare. I have a lot of patients who's worried about, hey, am I risk for, have I high risk for dementia or Alzheimer's? So these, these are real issues now that I see in the practice. And that's why I introduced, well, not really, it's not an, an old uh, peptide, it's called dihexa. So dihexa is amino hexanoic amide. That's why we call it dihexa, right? Forget about that long name. It's a small peptide that causes the blood brain barrier. So it goes to the brain directly and has garnered interest in the scientific community for its potential for neurotrophic and cognitive enhancing um, properties. It's a six amino acid long peptide. Uh, it's directly derived from angiotensin four. It's, it's a metabolite of angiotensin two which is when you hear that word, you always hear, think about, oh, blood pressure, right? So angiotensin II is a vasoconstrictor that increases blood pressure. But this one, they, they actually uh, re got the, the better part of this, um, uh, of this uh, metabolite. And then you get angiotensin IV. Similar to the discovery of like um, CMAX, another brain peptide, um, angiotensin IV can enhance the acquisition and recall of information. So this is one of the reasons why I use it myself. If you know, I'm in a conference, if I'm um, about to go into a, a meeting, you definitely want to absorb everything. Uh, but uh, of course, because it's easily degraded, angiotensin IV is uh, unsuitable as a drug. So as you can see, not much pharmaceutical companies are jumping on this. Uh, but thanks to the investigation of the researchers of Washington State University, now there is a viable peptide for us to use. Okay, so uh, once again, we've talked about peptides. Peptide is a small chain of amino acids. Did you say? I thought you heard you. I thought I heard you say it was six. Six chain amino of six. acid long. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a very short peptide, mm -hmm. and peptides are made in the body. But this is one that you are actually taking yourself, mm -hmm. right? Right. And you said that it it helps you to focus. Um, when you're at a conference or whatever, you can concentrate better. Maybe somebody's studying for a test or they're trying right. to cram a bunch of stuff in their brain. And do you really notice? Oh, yeah. Uh, I load it up. It gets me out of those uh, moments <clears throat> that you get. And, you know, and it just revs you up. Gets It's like a, makes you like a sponge to make you focus. So it really does help me a lot. So, I mean, self-testimonial from, from my end. That's right. You always got to test it on yourself. So how do you take it? Is there multiple ways to take this peptide? I mean, how do you get it in your body? You're right. So typically it's recommended um, as a cream. So you apply it in the inner forearms until the cream is completely absorbed. And other dosing methods have been utilized in examining the, the scientific evidence uh, in relation to this peptide. Usually we start with, with of course, animals, mice studies, typically used as IV injections. So we don't use that. This is just a part of the, the research about it. And they actually um, found that uh, the injecti injectable form converts into dihexa. So it's not a direct dihexa uh, medication that they're getting. And this is something that also was employed uh, once a day as a subcutaneous injection for, again, for animals. We're not for, for humans. There's only uh, two available, um, I guess, ways on how to give it. And even the dosing, it's not, um, there's no specific range or recommendation for that. And that's why I tell patients to find your dose, experiment. It's really hard to overdose on these peptides because they're pretty safe. 
And the most popular method of administration is, of course, the cream that I just mentioned to you a while ago. And according to the majority of some anecdotal testimonials, the best dose range is anywhere from 8 milligrams to 45 milligrams taken daily. And for me, the one that I take is orally. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the cream. It's, it's sticky. That's why I take it. So, but side effects, again, very minimal. If you take too much, we're talking about a bucket load here, might be nervousness, irritability. As you can see, the commonalities of these side effects are overstimulation of the brain. So again, very safe and pretty handy when you have oral and cream with you. Okay, so you prefer the oral version and how, how long does it take before you, how, if, if you know you're going to a conference and you're, mm -hmm. You know, you're getting off the plane or whatever. Uh, you're going to the hotel room, getting ready to go. How long before you want to focus do you take this? So the thing here is I always tell patients at least an hour for the reason that, of course, you need to get it through the, the, the gut barrier. But bigger question here, right? How is your gut? <laughs> if you have an inflamed gut, absorption is also less. And that's why cream sometimes is better for the ones who has other comorbidities, for the ones who has like, yeah, I have IBS. I don't know if it's going to absorb fast. I just use the cream and rub it on yourself. Uh, that's why it really depends. But on my end, yes, an hour before, um, uh, that's probably good enough. And it lasts me the whole day because we stay in conferences and we get locked in rooms like prisoners for like the whole day. We we'll come in in the morning, we come out at night. So, but that's enough of a dose for me. Hmm. To make me and <laughs> would you say that the cream and the oral version are equally as popular? Uh, really, I see the oral a little bit more popular just because of how easy it is to take. So when, when as I mentioned to you, the creams, uh, I have to wait. I can't put my, like, I wear long sleeves for work. I mean, it's going to rub on my, my, my wrist and forearms. Uh, but for people on the go, and most of the time, these people who need this, are on the go people like businessmen, entrepreneurs, um, lawyers. And that's why our cream is always going to be a hassle for them. And the creams, my experience with that is it's really popular when you're using it as hormones, uh, meaning, for example, your progesterone cream and you use it at night because it helps you go to bed. But you don't want to do this at night because it gives you that brain stimulation. It might rev you up and, I guess, devoid you of sleep. So, but overall, with my patients and myself, oral, it's kind of like a, what everybody's going for. Okay. So again, everybody, you know, a peptide is a small chain of amino acids, which means your body gets this from protein. When you eat protein, your body makes peptides and chains of protein, but this is already put together for you, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's all prepped out. Hmm. Okay, um, very interesting. And uh, how do how would somebody get this? Do, is do you have to have a prescription or? Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, most people of would have to ask their doctor. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes, uh, compounding pharmacies uh, actually will will do this, and you you need a prescription for that. I mean, you would see some unadulterated versions of this out there. Uh, I just caution everybody, of course, the source, uh, the purity, impure, the, the fillers that are in there, because I, I use a, a reliable compounding pharmacy to, to make mine. For